Before the children go, we want to pray for them. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> S- Siri is reading me. <laughs> Before the children go to Sunday school, we want to pray for them. I, I do understand it's back to school, and we want to pray that God will be with our children Amen. as they are returning back to school. So if you don't mind, shall we kindly be on our feet? and just begin to offer a prayer of protection over, over, over their lives. Yes, God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. And if the kids are here, if you're in university or in a preschool, wherever, you can come up front as we stretch forth our hands and pray for them. The kids, if you're here, you can come up front, whether you are returning to post-secondary or a middle school, wherever level you are, you can come forward. We believe in the prayer of, of parents. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these ones, oh God, that you have blessed us with. Thank you, oh God. Wow, that's a lot of... A lot of returnees. (laughs) Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, O God, for your protection over them. We ask, O God, even as they are going to school, let the angels of God guide them. Give them success in the name of Jesus. We pray, O God, for the spirit of Daniel, the spirit of excellency, to fall upon them in the name of Jesus. We pray this morning, O God, that even as they are returning back to school, Lord, you will grant them the spirit of acceleration to excel in every level and every challenge that they encounter in the school. We pray that the hand of the Lord will be upon you. Wherever you're going, whether you're going out of town, may the Lord be with you. May the Lord grant you victory. May the Lord open up your intellect that you will be able to excel far above your peers. Now that may the Lord touch you, may he empower you to be the great child of God that you are. In Jesus' mighty name, shall we say amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Now you may return. And if you don't mind, let's hold hands. Let's hold hands. Wherever you are, let's hold hands. Thank you, Jesus. Let's hold hands. This morning, I want to declare some things over you. I want to speak the word of God over your life. There are so many things that are happening among us. But this morning, the Lord is here to touch you. The Lord is here to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. I thank you, O God, that this morning the spirit of delay is broken. There is somebody here this morning, there are some things you have been praying for a long time. There are some things you have been expecting for a long time, and it's been delayed. But this morning, by the power of the Lord, by the reason of the anointing, Bible says every yoke shall be broken. I command the spirit of delay to be broken, that you will possess your possession. You will take what belongs to you. Whatever the Lord has destined for your life, whatever the hand of God has written, may you possess it this morning in the name of Jesus. No more delays. No more struggles. Whatever power that you need to conquer, receive it in the name of Jesus. I speak to you this morning. Any spirit of fear, there are some who are fearful. There are some who are crippled because of fear. This morning I liberate you. This morning I set you loose. Run in the boldness of the power of God. Run in the fire and in the anointing of God. There are no more fear. Whatever fear that you've been fearing, the spirit of hesitation, you will keep hesitating. Things that you're supposed to run with, you keep moving back and forth. This morning may that never be so. May the Lord empower you that you will run with it in boldness. I speak this morning against every sickness. Every sickness. The spirit of suicide. 
the spirit of sickness that has crippled a lot of people. And because of that, they cannot see the purpose and the plan of God for their life. This morning, may the Lord heal you. May he heal your mind. May he heal your body. Whatever weaknesses that has crippled you, in Jesus' name, I command liberation. May you be free. Whom the Son set free, the Bible says is free, and is free, and you are free, and you are free, and you are free, and you are free. You are free in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord. Shall we have a seat? God bless you. Apostle is not here this morning. He's in Montreal. Let us continue to pray for him and for the family. Um, also, our resident pastor, Pastor GB and Pastor Jenny will be here with us next week Sunday. And so let us continue and remember them in prayer. Amen. Amen. This morning, there's a word that I want to share with you that the Lord has done on my heart for some time. I want to speak on a topic, your spirit as the candle of God. Your spirit as the candle of God. I always say to myself, I am a spirit with a human body. Can you say that? I am a spirit with a human body. Amen. The perfect way to, to say and describe yourself, you live in a, a physical body, but a spirit being. And I think Apostle has mentioned that a couple of times here. But there are times that we see the other way around. That we see ourselves as humans with a physical body. And therefore we tend to operate based on the details of the physical body. We tend to move more on the physical side more than the spiritual aspect. But this morning, I want to tell you that God has given you anointing. But you don't live on anointing. If you live, anointing is a gift. How many of you here work for anointing? It's God that gives anointing. So you can't live on anointing. You see, what maintains you is your character. That's why anointing without character, you will be destroyed. Yes. What sustains the anointing is your character. Anointing without character will lead you to catastrophe. Anointing is what maintains you. But character is who you are. And there are examples in scripture of those who live on anointing. In fact, the Bible describes Samson as a very powerful man. He had a lot of anointing, but no character. But you look at somebody like Joseph, the Bible says he had character. So when Joseph was faced with a challenge, he said, how can I do this against my God? It was something that he has built in the inside of you. You see, what will, what will help you to... To resist temptation is not the anointing. It's what's in the inside of you. What you have cemented inside your, your spirit. And so we are in a time and season where God wants you to build yourself in the most holiest which is upon his word. The word of God is cemented down inside of you. I live on his word. Because that's what David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that will not sin against you. Because of the word of God. 
Not because of the anointing. Anointing is good. It helps us to overcome and overtake big challenges and big things. Amen. God will always speak to your spirit. God will not speak to your mind. God will not speak to your body. God will speak to your spirit. Hallelujah. God spoke to Adam's spirit and not through things. Do you know that in scripture, God spoke to the spirit of Adam. He wasn't speaking to, you know, things like Moses in scripture where he needed manifestations of God through things. But Adam, God spoke to him. Adam couldn't even hear when God was coming. Can you imagine? He did not see God physically, but he can sense God in his spirit. And that's where the place where God wants to bring us, where you are able to sense things in your spirit. Even when you will go through things, you might not be able to have a, a clear understanding or explanation, but you can sense things in your spirit. Amen. This morning, may that be you. Amen. Because you know what? When you get to that level, there are some things you can navigate your way through. Why? Because your spirit is alive. Amen. And you sense God here, yes. not here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because your spirit, it is crucial that you know how to function in it. Apostle has been teaching us about prophecy and being ability to prophesy. And all of us, uh, we, we, we have that gift, that ability we can prophesy. Because once you have and you understand how to operate in the things of the spirit, it will change and revolutionize your Christian life. But most of us, we know how to operate in the physical world. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, we are completely absent-minded. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, you are saved by grace. And that you will be able to walk in the spirit. Spiritual things. We are, we are spiritual. We live in a physical body, but we are spiritual. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says that in the beginning, God. I like that scripture. In the beginning, God. Listen, the beginning of everything originated from God. Anything that does not begin with God will not last. That is why that everything must begin with God. Everything must begin with God. Whatever that is not in God will not last. That's why some of us, we have useless headaches. Because whatever you experience, the chances are that it began by yourself. You started it out then, and because of that, it will not last. But the Bible tells us in the beginning, God. God is the originator of all beginnings. All things. Your healing will begin in God. Your deliverance is in God. Your promotion is in God. Everything begins in God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, I like in 1 John 5, 4, it goes on. He says that that which is born of God has overcome. Anything that is born of God, anything that is God originated is an overcomer. Every promise that God has given to you, because it's from God, you are an overcomer. And it will surely come to pass. Hallelujah. Some people begin, you know, life in the spirit by knowing people. Hey, I know, you know how many prophets I know. This one will look at you he will, and he will tell you everything about you. I know big men of God. So, life in the spirit does not begin with your experience. Life in the spirit begins on your knees. Where you begin to go on your knees and you begin to shaka. You begin to, 
you, you begin to seek God in another level. You begin to pray to God. It is not the experience of who you know. It is not who is your friend or what church you go to. The life in the spirit begins on your knees. That is why half of the church, when you talk about prayer, you will see, you'll be lucky if you see uh, 20 people. Prophet was saying that the intercession team are, are growing. Praise God. Amen. Come front line. You know, on Friday you talk about front line. Hey, I'm busy. I'm busy. Life and the spirit begins on your knees. You are coming here not to pray to me. You are coming here to pray for yourself. So that what God has purposed for your life will come to pass. But the church, we are so relaxed. The church, we are, so, we are, we are in a position where, hey, everything's going to be all right. It is time where we tap into the, 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 the atmosphere of what God has created to pray. Even in this nation. Just re, Canada is negotiating our trade deal. Do you know that will affect us? How many of you, how many of you have prayed? I'll be honest. <laughs> This is a time where we pray for Canada. Where this is a time where we pray for Calgary. Where we can see the man of God being manifested. Do you think the man of God will just come like that? It is through the people and the children of God where churches will begin to meet and begin to pray that Lord, whatever you have purpose for Calgary, whatever you have purpose for my family, Whatever you have purpose for this nation, it will come to pass. Amen. But when there's a call for prayer and that you don't see many people, yes, we are busy, but God has a plan. Yes, right. God has a plan. Amen. I'm telling you, God has a plan. Amen. And the plan is that, that his purpose will be filled. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has created you unique. We are all unique, wonderfully and fearfully made. God has not made a duplicate of you for you to copy somebody, for you to look like somebody. Just be yourself. Tell somebody, be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. You're unique. And in our uniqueness, we see the glory of God. In your uniqueness, you see the power of God. But we are in a system where everybody is trying to be like somebody. This morning, be yourself. Amen. 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 Now let's get into the word. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the... Oh, come out, speak to me. They are the sons of God. Now, according to this scripture... Who are the sons of God? No, 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 no. According to the scripture. <laughs> Come on, speak to me. Uh -huh, now you're talking. Those who are what? Led. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are... So the son or the child of God must be led by the Spirit of God. This is where our challenges are. Stop being led by your emotion. Stop being led by your senses, physical senses. The son and the child of God must be led by the spirit of God. I am not talking about systems. 
I'm talking about even your family and your nation, the community needs you. When you are led by the Spirit of God, you become providential to your people. You become beneficial because you are led by the Spirit. This morning, may somebody be led by the Spirit of God. This indicates that there are some that will not be led by the Spirit. As many that are led by the Spirit of God. So which means that there are some that who are not led by the Spirit of God. That is why as a child of God, it is crucial that you allow the Spirit of God to lead you in businesses. Some of you, you have walked into a, a, a dungeon, but because your spirit is close. Some of you, you have walked into a horrible relationship, and every day you are broken hearted. But the, when the Spirit of God leads you, when the Spirit of God guides you, there are some things that will alert you. Even though all of us, one way or the other, we, we, we allow ourselves to be led astray. And then you, you are able to see the difference. You are able to sense and know that, no, 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 this one, I, was, uh, I allow myself to be led away. I allow myself to be led by, by my emotions. I allowed myself to be led by the things that my eyes were seeing. You know, it's so hard, and that's why Apostle Paul said, Paul put it perfectly. He said, the things I really want to do, I'm having a hard time doing them. Listen, these things are not a small thing. The things I want to do, I cannot do. But the things that I don't want to do, that I end up doing them. Because there is a constant battle between the spiritual things and the physical things. And nobody is perfect. Including from the top here. Everybody falter. But don't remain in your, in your mess. You gather yourself. Put yourself together. And begin to move forward for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, the devil has twisted our battles around. And why do I say that? Because, you know, instead of us holding hands and fighting the devil, the devil will turn around and all of a sudden we are fighting ourselves. And he's standing beside us just laughing. That's how we have become in families, in marriages in communities, even nations against nations. Why? Because instead of us fighting the enemy, we are fighting rather ourselves. You go to some churches and you, you realize the battles that are going on. Even the husband and wife sitting on the same seat, they are battling each other. May God have mercy on us. Yeah. Ah! You are supposed to hold my hand so we can tycoon this one down. We can fight the enemy. We can stand together and battle together. But now all of a sudden, the one that is supposed to be watching my back is now hitting me from behind. <laughs> that is where we have come to. Because this is the plans and the strategy of the enemy. Families and homes have become Royal Rumble and UFC 50. <laughs> Where we are battling each other. Child of God, that is not a purpose and a plan of God. Amen. When we allow the Spirit of God to lead us, you will see your brother, your husband, your, your co-laborer, you will see us together fighting one common enemy. Amen. Not fighting ourselves. This morning, I command and pray that that Spirit will never be among us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has created us in three parts, just like himself. We are spirit, we have soul, and we have body. See, these three things, once you understand them, you know what component of your life is speaking to you. Because whether you believe it or not, every part of this component has the ability to speak. 
Your soul can speak to you. Your spirit can speak to you. And your body, you and I know it, is so powerful. <laughs> your body can speak so loud that sometimes some, some people, they even lose their conscience. They don't remember anything because the, the desires of the flesh is so strong. So your soul has a voice. Your spirit has a voice. And your body has a voice. The question is that, which part of your component is speaking to you? Which part of your component is leading you? The true sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. That is the plan and the purpose of God for your life. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, it says that the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The light is meant for it to illuminate you, your ways and your path. As a child of God, you will go through so many things. But the Spirit of God, which is your candle, the light, is supposed to bright your way. Because there are so many things that will bombard you. There are so many things that will come at you. There are, you know... Usually when I go, in, I, I, I'm uh, around 5 a.m., I'm al already on the road heading to work. And sometimes I take the back road. Even in the winter time, it's even more darker. Because, you know, when winter comes around, uh, the, uh, it gets dark earlier. And there are days that even the regular driving lights will not do it. You need a high beam. Yeah. Eh? Have you ever encountered those type of darkness? And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a deer will just jump in front of you. Some of us, that's our life. Out of nowhere, things will just jump right in front of you. But spiritually, you need to change and tap into your high beam. Where all of a sudden, your regular lights will not work. You say, this one, and that's what the disciples say. Hey, this one, we've been praying and casting us. not work. Jesus said, this one... This one is prayer and fasting. You need to change into a high beam and all the sun begin to attack it from a different level. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Where well, you need to, 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 to engage the enemy constantly. And you say, I, not in my house. This will not happen. Not in my house. Not on my watch. It will not happen. But some of us, we just relax. And so, oh, it's a deer. Oh, just, I, I will break, let, let them just pass by. There are some things that are popping up in our lives. It's not that you pray for it. It's not that you are wishing for it. And you know what? Some of these things, it doesn't matter who you are, it can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It is only by his grace that you are able to put yourself together. That's why I will never stand to say that, you know, whether it's a man of God, a woman of God, whoever they are, and pinpoint, because that can happen to anybody. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so, when you have engaged God that way and say that your light is constantly is on, the Bible says that, oh, you took my scripture off. <laughs> it says that the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching all in the inward parts of the belly, is searching. Your, the light is always on because your spirit is active. Things, when things pop up and all of a sudden you realize, aha, I didn't plan to play, but I, I feel like praying right now. I, 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 didn't, I didn't plan to do this. All of a sudden there's an urge that just comes upon you. There's an urge that comes upon you. Don't joke with it. Some of you, you know, even God will pop some people's name in your mind. All of a sudden you have a name in your mind. Why is it all, all of a sudden you have somebody's name comes in your mind? You know what I do? I just pray for that person. Some of you, you say, oh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll call the person later. No, no, no. Even if you, come, if you cannot call the person, take even 30 seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this sister, for this brother, wherever she is, I pray for your grace to locate her. Just a word of prayer. 
Because God is, God is stirring up your spirit. But we tend to ignore some of these promptings. Hallelujah. Amen. Your candle, your spirit as a candle. And it is searching in the inward. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1 verse 4 to 9, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness. Somebody say darkness. darkness. Your light will shine in darkness. Amen. And when your light comes, darkness will disappear. Yes. Darkness will disappear. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say that there was a, they say that, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And I like the verse 9. It says that, that was the true light which lightened every man that cometh into this world. This scripture is so powerful. The verse 9 is telling us that there is a measure of light given to every person enter into this planet. Whether that person is a believer or not a believer. Whether a person is a Hindu or Muslim. They have a measure of light. And that's why they have the idea of serving a supreme being. Worshipping, they have the, the measure of light that there is a God. But they are just serving the wrong God. You understand? They have a measure of light. They believe that there is a creator. Even for those who don't believe that there is God, they serve the God of science or that there is a greater wisdom and knowledge somewhere. They serve a God. And therefore, there is a measure of light that has been given to every man that cometh unto this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The life in him is your life. The life in him is your life. The light of God is our life. And therefore, it illuminates in our path. Because our spirit is a candle of God, God sends his messages there. God sends his light there. And that is why when a person is not born again, they can't receive anything spiritual. The Bible said the spiritual things are foolishness to those who are what? Perishing. They can't receive. They cannot perceive. They cannot understand. They, it's just pure nonsense. How do you mean, as a prophet was saying, you go to church and they say, give you what? You are one-tenth of your, ah, you people are crazy, man. That's what he would say to you. Communion, anything spiritual, they cannot understand it. They will not, don't waste your time trying to debate. This guy is spiritually dead. Don't waste, you, you are trying to, you understand? Once the person receives Christ, then the light of God shines in. And now the spirit opens up to receive spiritual things. But when the spirit is dead and you are trying to give spiritual things to a dead spirit, it's it won't work. It will not work. And so the Bible says that we were once, we, our spirits were dead. And so the Holy Spirit came upon us. And that's why Nicodemus didn't understand this whole born again business. He said, okay, you are trying to tell me that I need to be born again. How does this thing work? Look at me. How am I going to enter into, back into my mother's womb and be reborn? And he said, no, no, no. This thing is spiritual business. Your spirit needs to be born again because the spirit is dead. And therefore, when the Holy Spirit comes and once the person confesses, they now begin to receive spiritual things. They begin to have an insight. Even though when you're born again from, in the beginning, there are so many things you probably wouldn't understand. But the spirit of God now begins to guide you, begin to give you understanding. That's why some of us, there are some scriptures you have read so many times. 
and all of a sudden one day, bam, there's a revelation. You say, wow, I've never seen this before. I've read this scripture so many times, and yet I have no understanding. The word of God is multidimensional. The word of God is what? Multidimensional. Even when you think you know the word, when you think you have heard, God will shock you. The same word. You read it and all of a sudden revelation. You read the same word, all of a sudden different understanding and say, wow. Somebody say, wow. 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 Nigerians, they will say, this God, now wow. <laughs> this God, now wow. God will wow because he will give you details, revelation, understanding, sometimes even about yourself. There are some things about yourself you think you know yourself. Wait till God get hold of you. He will strip you naked. And God will undress you one time. <laughs> the word of God is powerful. The Bible says it's quicker and sharper. Than double edged sword. Don't play with the word of God. The word of God is dangerous. You know, you could give the same meat, you know, for, for those who are good in cooking. We'll give you, let's say, goat meat. <laughs> you, you have 10, 10 different people. Give them goat meat. They will make 10 different. Dishes. Do you understand? That's the word of God. The same word can die differently speak in a way that you have never heard. That's why you have to be patient. And you say, God, teach me. The Bible says when the spirit of God comes, he will lead you into all truth. All truth. Never think you know it all. He said, Lord, teach me. Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Holy Spirit, educate me. And this morning, God wants to educate you. Through his word. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul makes a perfect distinction between the two. The spirit and, 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 and the physical world. In Philippians 1, 21 to 24. Philippians 1, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I won't know. For I am in a sweet between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far Better. Amen. And so Paul was saying that, you know, the, the flesh wants fleshly things. You understand? It wants to stay in this world. You know, the fame, the desires. But the spirit wants to be with the Lord. Do you understand? Because the inner man, the spirit of man, has a different desire. Your spirit, the, the things, as a prophet was saying earlier on, that if the whole week, the whole week, if the only time we see you Sunday, then by the time we come back Sunday, you'll be starving spiritually. Because your spirit needs food. Yes. And the food that your spirit eats is not the same... Uh, Macaroni and cheese you eat. It has different food that it eats. The spirit eats the word of God. The spirit hunger after prayer to have a constant communication with God. But you may be outwardly looking very beautiful, but inside you are starving. Your spirit is starving. Why? Because you need to stay sharp. You need to stay active. Yes. You understand? Can you imagine even some of us 
For a couple of hours, when you haven't eaten, you say, oh, I'm dizzy. <laughs> you are dizzy because you are starving yourself. Your body is trying to tell you, say, my friend, give me food. The same with your spirit. Some of you, the whole week, you have not even opened your Bible to read. The whole week, you haven't even entered and engaged God in prayer. You are killing your spirit. And what happens is that your spirit becomes dull and it cannot sense stuff. It cannot pick stuff up. And that's why we must constantly engage. You don't wait till something happens in your life and all that's how you want to pray. You have to remain engaged so that as you are praying, your spirit becomes active. And some of you, even your dreams will begin to change. As you pray, some of you, I I was talking to somebody, I said, he said, Pastor, I don't dream. I said, huh? You don't dream? (laughs) You mean you don't dream at all? He said, no. Dreams are part and parcel of God's gift to the children of God. Every single one of us must dream. Hallelujah. And so, this aspect of it, as you are praying and as you are engaging God, All these aspects of your life begin to change. Your life, your spirit become active. You don't need to come and pray maybe three, four, five hours. But your life must be a life engaging God. Whether you are driving, wherever you are, you know, get some good music in and begin to, you know, talk to God. Anything to stir up your spirit. Not some of these songs that will... Just make you jump around and jump around. <laughs> you need songs that will provoke you. You know, there are some apostles spoke of it here. There are some sound that when you hear, all of a sudden you put on your wall face. You begin to pray in, in, in a very different dimension. Why? Because it's stirring up something within you. Get those things. Get closer to those things. Don't Don't fill your mind with junk. Don't fill your heart with junk. Because what those things do is that they will will cover your spirit. And therefore, instead of sensing things, your spirit is shielded, covered with garbage. You need to say, ah, loose me. And let your spirit be open to Jehovah God. So he will begin to sense his light on you. And all of a sudden, you begin to, you become a prophet in your house, in your workplace. God will begin to speak to you in your spirit, even though you cannot have full understanding of them. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4.16, it says that outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. Even though you are outward man, there are times... You know, you are fasting or waiting on God, you know, for for, for something that you are believing God for. And therefore, you have to punish this guy a little bit, this physical man, because uh, the desires are too much. There are times you have to remove yourself, you know, from your comfort zone and just, you know, go to a different place. The Bible is saying that uh, for which cause, he says that the outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. As you do that, your spirit, you are pumping your spirit up. Your spirit is becoming active. Your spirit is become, uh, is being fed with the things of God. It is receiving signals from the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, in this process, you become stronger. Even as your flesh may seem weak. But the Bible is saying that your spirit is becoming stronger and stronger. This morning, may that be you. You know what? There's only about four months before the year 2018 comes to an end. And strong. And 2018 strong. Become active and engage with God. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 4, sorry, chapter 3 verse 4, it says... Let it be the hidden man of the heart with the inner beauty. The hidden man of the heart. Let it be the hidden man of the heart with the inner beauty. Like I said, don't spend, 
I believe in beauty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I believe in, you know, looking beautiful. Yes. Just because you are spiritual doesn't mean you can't look, you know, yes, looking nice. You need to look nice. It has important. But don't spend all your, your product on this physical person that one day it will just be laid down. You understand? And then your spirit man is ugly and, and suffering. Some of you, you all know John McCain. Hello, the U.S. Senator. And I was just watching some of the news. I mean, look at some of the stuff that this man have done. And, and, and all of a sudden, listen, his life is over. He has done a lot for his nation. The time will come that we also will, our life will come to an end. But let us beautify our inner man. Yes. Let us spend time, you know, uh, uh, on the inner man. In, hallelujah. You know, the people of old could not perceive God with their spirit. Like Elijah, powerful Moses, even Abraham. They could not perceive God with their spirit because they was, their spirit were not born again. So the only way God can manifest to these powerful men of God was through things. So God will come down to Moses in the form of burning bush. God will appear to them in the form of physical and tangible things because their spirit could not perceive God. They cannot acknowledge Jehovah God only when he comes in the form of manifestation. But for us, for us today, our spirit is born again. And yet we are still asking for manifestation of physical things. You sense God here. Listen, God has spoken. That is the original plan of God. The original plan of God was not to manifest through things. It will speak directly to your spirit. Speak directly to you. Listen, I know God here. You know, I, I, I said that Adam was probably saying, yes, God. Yeah, yeah. He, he was speaking to God, yet he was not seeing God. But the, old, the people of old needed to see something. And therefore he appeared, he said, hey, remove your sandals for the ground in which you are standing on is a holy ground. Why? And then all of a sudden they, they become aware of the environment. So, oh yeah, God is here. But the, you, for us, we don't need that. God has advanced us. God has catapulted us to another level. We see and we sense God in here. God all of a sudden will open your eyes. And you begin to see things that you have never seen before. Yeah. The, the, even though that God, the person has not been with you, but he can read you. you have you ever seen people reading people? Ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apostle, when he came back from the sabbatical, he said, hey, Papa, you are on another level. Over. <laughs> and a man get down here, and, and the spirit of God, that's how it is. He doesn't need to see a manifestation. He doesn't, he doesn't, want, he doesn't want, need to see that yeah, all of a sudden there was a, a, a big cloud as, as the people of Israel, the cloud that was leading them. No. The Spirit of God comes upon you. And all of a sudden you sense in here and the third eye is open. And after all of a sudden you begin to move majestically and begin to see things as I say, and, and you begin to speak into the lives of people. Why? Because you are not moved by the tangible and physical things. Let us move from that. That was from the people of old. But now we have moved to another level. Child of God, you are on another level. You don't need manifestations. You are God's eyes. You are God's voice. You are God's hands. So the moment you begin to lay hands, the hand of God comes. The moment you begin to speak, the voice of God is released Amen. because you have become God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
This is powerful. You are God the incarnate. Do you understand? You are like a little God. Ha! Huh. You are a little God on earth. God literally uses you as you are. The futures. Bible said whatever you declare, as you are declaring, God is saying, bam, it's done. As you begin to speak it, God concord and say, yes, it is as my seven has spoken. Are you here? And so the people of God did not have that privilege. But through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the born again experience, we have become the extension of God. Hallelujah. This morning, I want us to pray. Do you want to pray? Yes. Are you okay for that? Yes. I want us to pray. And our prayer this morning, and if you need to come forward, please, there's women and men of God here, we will help you to pray. Our prayer is that, that you may receive the born again experience. If you are here this morning, one of the most important part of, I believe, service is to create the opportunity for those who have not received Christ to receive him. So if you're here this morning and you haven't accepted him, if you are here this morning, you haven't given yourself to him and accept him as your Lord, this is your morning. So that you can receive the born again experience. So that your spirit will be open. Hallelujah. To receive the things of God. We are praying this morning that the Spirit of God will lead you. Those, the true sons of God are led by the Spirit. Before the year end, you must be led by the, God, the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God has to lead you. In your household, in your family, everywhere you go, you must become an extension of God in which He will use you to things. Hallelujah. We have our next prayer is that we are praying that removing anything covering your light from shining. Whatever that is covering your light from shining. This morning God is here as we are praying with you so that you can shine. So you can shine and possess the possession that God has given to you. If you don't mind, let us be on our feet even as I invite our music team. If you need... A prayer, you can come forward. Let us spend, I want us, what time is this? Good. Oh, g g glory to God, I'm on time. <laughs> I want us to spend 10 minutes. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And then after that, we will close. I promise. Man de rebo, shkabran de rebo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this morning. Wherever you are, if you feel that uh, you want uh, a support in prayer, feel free to come forward. We will pray with you and for you. Makaya Brante. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you this morning. Thank you, O oh God. Makante Brande Lebo Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Reka brandele bo ska brandele bo sha Kataria kabele bo Re mahakaturia tarababa Begin to pray Begin to seek the face of God Begin to pray that love That the spirit of born again Will begin to be active in your life Oh as that the spirit of God will lead you There are areas of your life That there are other things that are leading you this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, may you lead your people. May you lead your people. May you lead your people. Oh, Ramahaki and Masutari Open your mouth and begin to pray. Anything covering your light this morning. May the Lord remove them. Begin to open your mouth. Lihande Brasuka Toria Kabalebe. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you, oh God, that our spirit are liberated. Lord, any covering over our spirit that we cannot perceive the things of God. 
this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, I speak over somebody this morning. Mahaki andolo bo 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 bo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Have mercy, O oh God, this morning. Father, touch us this morning. Father, elevate and empower us, O oh God, this morning. Re mama kindele broso toriaka. Li mahakuri indi masa toriaka baraba. Thank you, O God, this morning. Thank you, O God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, O God, that, O God, the burdens, O God, are lifted. Thank you, O God, that the chains are broken. Thank you, O God, that, Lord, I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you Jesus. are here now. Have your way. As we bow down, you are here. You are here now. Have your way. 